This video will take you through the next of the Module A um, Language, Culture and Identity poems set for study for English Standard, which is Circular Breathing by J.S. Savage. So looking at the context of this poem, so J.R. Savage wrote this poem while traveling alone in Rome. And it was published as an anthology as part of um, his anthology titled Surface to Air. The poem was inspired by the experience of seeing and hearing a non-Indigenous man playing the didgeridoo in the Piazza di Santa Maria and the impact that that had on him in terms of understanding perhaps his own culture and I guess some of the inauthentic aspects that he, and feelings that he had associated with that. So in this moment when he saw this non-Indigenous um, person playing the didgeridoo in Rome, it triggered memories of home for Savage. And he then dedicated this poem to his friend, a contemporary Indigenous Australian poet, Samuel Wagon Watson. Uh, there are also distinct memories that Savage recalls uh, in being in Watson's house with renowned Indigenous musician, uh, William Barton. The place, sound and memories of home, according to Savage, were intense for him uh, to hear this ancient culture amongst the ruins of an ancient empire in a, ma in a major European um, city. So for him, it was a real juxtaposition in terms of hearing um, this music or this sound, uh, which was so familiar to him in such a foreign place and the way in which that um, sparked questions I guess for him in terms of his identity uh, will be revealed within this poem. So looking at some of the key ideas in this poem, so we've got the imperial and colonial cultures, we've got the, the concept of self and home, cultural identity as an Australian uh, and the shame felt um, by Savage in being part of a nation that had been that is so indifferent towards its indigenous culture. The poem calls out the hypocrisy of the individuals um, in terms of why claim the sound as home. So why claim the sound of the didgeridoo as feeling so so much a part of his home and yet be indifferent about it when he actually is home. And you'll see that come through as we go through the poem. In terms of looking at the connections to the module, so there's a clear focus on language, culture and identity, although Savage himself in an interview had has, had, has admitted um, that he doesn't really understand why this poem was selected to study under the title of Contemporary Asian Australian Poetry. Um, he believes that the only connection to Asia is his, um, the hom that he mentions, the, the sound or the onomatopoeia of hom, uh, which is reference to Hinduism. Uh, the more, the comment for him is more about the Indigenous culture, language and identity and the hypocrisy and injustice um, faced towards Indigenous Australians. But perhaps this poem was studied uh, because of Savage's um, himself being an Asian Australian and his Indonesian background and the way in which this poem is really about the concept of identity. The title Cir Circular Breathing is quite significant and is actually quite metaphorical in that it is the direct link to the playing of the didgeridoo uh, and the idea of a metaphor for life in raising the question of what allows a culture to continue to breathe. So the idea of circular breathing being the ability to breathe in and breathe out continuously. So looking at the poetic style, so it's a free verse um, style of poem with uh, a very much a colloquial tone. The poem is not written in strict meter or rhythm uh, and the first, the first and last stanzas have seven lines and the second and third have six, six lines. And I think that that's quite um, significant in terms of the first and the last stanza really bring us to the sense of place, whereas the, the middle two stanzas really direct us in terms of that, that musician, the, the person who's actually playing the didgeridoo. We have internal and end rhymes. So within the poem them, themselves or the lines themselves, there is internal rhyme uh, and there's a couple of examples there. And then we have the end rhymes as well. 
There's the extended metaphor in which we've already talked about in terms of the idea um, of the sound that the didgeridoo um, serves and also the idea that that is echoed throughout each of the stanzas and also that concept of that circular breathing and that connect connection to culture. And then we have our religious paradox in our final stanza around the idea of the Rome's oldest Christian church as a direct allusion to Christianity in Australia and its impacts on Indigenous um, Australians. So let's have a look at the first stanza. So in reading the first stanza, it reads, There's a man with dreadlocks playing the didgeridoo in the Piazza di Santa Maria, and everyone is listening. Kids sit by the fountains, swapping smokes for laughs. Tourists lick gelati as they pass illicit markets. Belts, handbags, sunglasses, all made in. The place scratched off. Nuns halt, and then the calabinari, white gloves, black steel capped boots glistening. Now within this first stanza, we've got this sense of um, place being presented and it's set within the Piazza di Santa Maria, which is a very well-known um, piazza in Rome. It's a very narrative driven stanza. Um, and we've got the introduction of this man playing the didgeridoo and there's a man in dreadlocks. And I guess that the diction or the um, identification of him having dreadlocks gives us insight that perhaps he is not Indigenous. Um, and as we go go further on, um, he's then ref contrasted to a didgeridoo player that Savage has heard within Australia and is referred to as the truer player. So again, we've got this um, symbolic reference to the hybridity of identity. Uh, in terms of the people who are within the Santa, Santa uh, the piazza, uh, we've got the concept of everybody. So we've really got this really collective of people in terms of, of um, coming together in terms of listening to this sound. Uh, we've got the accumulation here of um, what's being sold at the markets in terms of belts, handbags, sunglasses. So the symbolic and, and the accumulation there in terms of this, these cheap sort of products that could be um, made and then we've got the removal of where they've actually been been um, been made which is quite a really cheeky sort of way in which he's he's visually presented the idea of the places being scratched off so that um, removal of that location here um, really does create that sort of sad um, tone and the idea that um, that they are quite cheap and 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 nasty and mimicking um, something which is far more authentic. So perhaps that is that symbolic representation of of this um, dreadlock playing didgeridoo player who's getting all this kudos for playing this um, really unique sounding instrument and yet it's, it's lacking that sense of authenticity. Uh, we've then got the nun's halt and then the carabinati, carabinati which is the Italian military. Um, are presented in terms of all all these people are, are surrounded to to listen to this music. Moving on to the second stanza, it reads: the crowd hems the young musician in, faces glazed with wonder. From where this could, where where could this strange mu music come from? Surely not this hemisphere. A drone of deep, as the yet unexcavated ruins far older than, than the Forum, Amani, Ray-Ban, Dolce and Cabana, all sink as once into equivalence. So the idea here, in terms of this second line here, we've got this art concept of wonder and that diction or um, symbolic reference there of the crowd being entranced by the uniqueness of this instrument, um, being quite interested in this and they sort of stop and, and look up and want to listen and, and know more about this strange music. Um, and this rhetorical question here again highlights that idea of its uniqueness. Where has this music come from? And surely not this hemisphere. So there's an acknowledgement there in terms of the origins of this instrument, uh, which really paint, um, paints a picture of, of how different um, and, and unexpected it is here. And the idea that, that this, this music, this instrument is, 
is so old and so unique that it's older than than the forum which um which is a historical site in rome from the 7th century bc um, and the ability to make this connection here um, as well as um, you know the idea of of listing and accumulating these really um, luxury products of Amani, Ray-Ban, Dolce and Cabana. So we've got this um, idea that the luxury has been taken away when we, we, we start to accumul accumulate really special items or really expensive items all together. They start to lose their shine, so to speak, um, and they all sink in, in equivalence so that, that they don't compare these things, these really amazing things and luxury items don't compare to to this this music being played. Moving on to the next stanza, so we've got um, he doesn't do the kangaroo or the mosquito or the speeding Holden. So the idea that he's you know he's not um, playing tricks with this instrument, rather he's highlighting the the motivation for him playing is spiritual rather than materialistic, and the persona is familiar with this sound. Um, and something that he he is really familiar with. Um, and then just the one dark lush hum and that auditory imagery there of that instrument and that diction which is coupled there with that auditory um, imagery of the lush reveals that real admiration for this instrument and and its beauty and the clear the clean energy of the circular breathing lungs and instrument the some familiar as, a, as an accordion. So again, we've got this, um, we've got this painting of a picture of something that's really familiar and familiar as an accordion, which is, an, which is a Russian instrument. So we've got this contrast of, of an accordion backed against this didgeridoo. And then we go on to, um, as Savage has mentioned, the Hindu mantra of Om, the sound there. So again, we've got that onomatopoeia, which contrasts um, the real worldly nature of this didgeridoo playing. So this didgeridoo, this Australian instrument, is put alongside um, a Russian instrument and a Hindu mantra. So the idea of it being quite worldly. The final stanza is quite reflective in its tone. So um, it, it reads, I want to bolt up the stairs of the fountain and claim the sound as the sound of my home, but stop. When I recall how rarely I slow to hear a truer player busking in St George Square, memory kinks my measured walk into a lurch. My stomach fills with fire, far above cold star wheels. I found the spire of Rome's oldest Christian church. So this is a really interesting stanza here and quite a significant one in terms of the way in which Savage reacts to him wanting to bolt up the stairs of the fountain and, and you know, yes, this is my um, cultural identity and my heritage here, uh, yet but he stops himself. Uh, because he knows that if he was at home and walking through King George's Square, he wouldn't do this. He wouldn't even give it pay it two cents he he wouldn't have given it the time of day so to speak so we've got this real juxtaposition here of I want to bolt up the stairs so he you know this element of excitement and that imagery of excitement yet he's stopped by his feelings of inauthenticity um, derived from his own Indian heritage we've got the conjunction there of but so the idea that it highlights he's, he's torn and doesn't acknowledge his Australian identity. So he's conflicted in his sense of identity with a sense of guilt. So there's an element of guilt because he wouldn't have stopped in St George's Square. We've then got the reaction that he has. So he has a physical reaction to this in terms of um, his walk, his, his memory kink, kinks in. So he starts to remember and his measured walk into a lurch. Uh, and his stomach fills with fire. So we've got this idea here that um, he's had a physical response to his inability to connect to the player. Following on from that, in the last two lines, we've got this juxtaposition happening. So in terms of far above the cold star wheel, 
around the spire of the ancient of Rome's oldest Christian church. So we've got this juxtaposition between the natural and the beauty beauties of the sky of the Euro against the European history. So the adjectives of cold and older suggest something of the past and accentuate a mood of alienation and displacement which pervades within the final stanza. So this last stanza which is highly reflective on his behaviour in terms of how he would react to this sound within Australia and how he's reacting to this sound um, within Europe is vastly different. So perhaps he's, he's considering his own contradictory behaviour in terms of um, his reaction to this and he's having this physical reaction um, to this response as his, um, you know, his walk turns into a lurch and even that diction of uh, lurch um, and his stomach fills with fire. So the alliteration there as well of the fills with fire really highlights um, metaphorically the guilt and hurt and frustration that he's feeling in his inability to connect to um, this Indigenous culture in his own hometown. So within Australia, his inability to connect to um, a truer sense as well, which is coupled when he's, he says a truer busker playing King George's Square. So his inability to connect with with a truer player and yet he feels this, this um, connection to this um, non-Indigenous person playing the didgeridoo and he wants to bolt up the stairs of the fountain. Um, so he's having that moment of... Um, moral consciousness, I guess, in terms of um, this connection that he has um, internationally and perhaps wishing that he would have that connection um, to, to his Australian culture and to his Australian sense of identity and, um, and also building up and legitimising the Indigenous Australian culture as well. So... Just finally, I think that the poem really does um, use that visual um, imagery to create a contrast between the organic and earthly authenticity, uh, which allows the reader or the responder to see the didgeridoo player more favourably. So I, I think it's hoping um, that after reading and deconstructing this poem that Australians would be able to connect with their um to the Indigenous culture and see it um, more authentically um, within our own country.